You've heard it everywhere. Seed oils are going to kill you. They're a fast track to an early grave, apparently. But what if there was actually a lot more to this whole picture? Now, just to be upfront, I do personally avoid seed oils myself. And I often recommend that others do too. But I want to be very clear from the outset, they're not, in and of themselves, toxic. The real problem isn't the oils, it's what some of the nutrients in them do to the balance of certain chemical messengers in the body. And once you understand that, the entire seed oil debate starts to look very different. So if you're new to the channel, my name's Dale Pinnock. I'm a double degree and postgrad trained nutritionist with over 30 years in the profession. And my job here is to cut through the noise and explain nutrition in a way that actually makes sense without all the drama and without all the clickbait. What I want to do here is bring some balance and context to a debate that has, quite frankly, got some of the online commentators scratching each other's eyes out. So let's start by clearing up the biggest misunderstanding. Seed oils on their own are not inherently inflammatory. They don't contain inflammatory molecules. They don't trigger some immediate damage response the minute they hit your bloodstream. But what they do contain is a very high concentration of fatty substances called omega-6 fatty acids, a type of essential fatty acid. And that word matters. We need essential fatty acids. We just need them in the right balance. When your diet becomes dominated by omega-6 fatty acids without enough of another essential fatty acid called omega-3 to counterbalance them, your body starts producing a very specific pattern of chemical signals that can quietly upset the inflammatory apple cart. It's those signals that influence inflammation, not the oil itself. So the question, are seed oils inflammatory, is actually the wrong one. The real question is, what do these oils contribute to my fatty acid balance and how does that balance influence inflammation? Once you understand that, everything else falls into place and makes sense. Okay, so what exactly are essential fatty acids and why do they matter so much? Fatty acids are more than just a fuel source. They're building blocks. Your body uses them to manufacture structural components and chemical messengers that control how cells behave. Different fatty acids are converted into different end product molecules. And those molecules do very different jobs in the body. Some support normal cell function, some influence hormone signaling, and some directly control inflammation. And this is where the story starts to get interesting. Now, here's a critical point. Omega-6 and omega-3 actually compete with each other. They run through the same metabolic machinery inside your body. They use the same enzymes. They follow the same conversion pathways. Think of it as a single biochemical production line with a limited number of workers. If your diet's heavy in omega-6, and also light in omega-3, omega-6 floods the line. It dominates the pathway. Omega-3 gets pushed in the back of the queue and struggles to be converted into substances that we actually want more of. Now, there is an important nuance here. Some of the metabolic end products made from omega-6 are genuinely beneficial. They support nerve function, hormone signaling, and somewhat ironically, some are even mildly anti-inflammatory. But we only need a small amount of omega-6 each day to make those beneficial compounds. Once that need is met, any excess omega-6 is processed differently and starts feeding into pathways that produce pro-inflammatory messengers instead. But at that point, Omega-6 isn't just doing its job, it's crowding out omega-3, and that's where balance really starts to matter. So let's slow this down and make it really clear. When you consume omega-3 and omega-6 fats, your body doesn't use them immediately. They have to be converted first. They're sent down what's essentially a biochemical production line where enzymes modify them into biologically active compounds. That production line uses enzymes like delta-6 desaturase, elongase, delta-5 desaturase, and the like. Think of these enzymes as specialised workers. Their job is to take raw fatty acids and turn them into signalling molecules that the body can actually use. Some of those signalling molecules switch inflammation on. Some help switch it off. Omega-6, when present in excess, tends to feed the on state. Omega-3 feeds the off state and the resolution phase. But, and this is the crucial bit, omega-3 and omega-6 are competing for the same workers. If omega-6 is arriving in large amounts, it takes priority. The line becomes congested. Omega-3 gets less access, meaning fewer anti-inflammatory compounds are produced. Not because it's not present, but because it can't get through the system efficiently. This is why balance matters so much. It's not that seed oils are inherently harmful. It's how much metabolic space their fatty acid content actually takes up. 
So let's zoom in on the specific messengers that actually do the work. One of the main ways that your body controls inflammation is through chemical messengers called eicosanoids. These are powerful signaling molecules directly derived from dietary fatty acids. Omega-3 and omega-6 fats are converted into completely different families of eicosanoids. One family tends to promote inflammation and immune activation, which is useful in short bursts, and then the other family helps to resolve inflammation and bring the response to a close. Your overall inflammatory tone, like the direction your body leads, is heavily influenced by which family you're producing more of. Once omega-3 and omega-6 fats have passed through that enzyme system that we spoke about, they're converted into eicosanoids like prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and thromboxanes. These molecules act like micro-instructions that tell your immune system how aggressively to respond. They're not bad or good, they're something that's just essential when you're injured or fighting an infection, but when pro-inflammatory signals dominate day after day, they create a background hum of low-grade inflammation. Omega-3 feeds the pathway that produces anti-inflammatory and pro-resolution messengers, the signals that help switch inflammation off once its job's done. So when omega-6 overwhelms that system, inflammation becomes easier to start, but much harder to stop. That's the biochemical heart of the entire seed oil issue. But here's the kicker. Most people consume far more, far more omega-6 than they're even aware of because it's everywhere in cooking oils, processed foods, sauces, snacks, takeaways, ready meals. The issue isn't that these foods are toxic either, it's that their omega-6 content quietly drowns out omega-3 and tilts the body towards inflammation over time. In traditional diets, omega-3 and omega-6 intake was relatively balanced. Both pathways operated smoothly, but modern eating patterns, well, they're, they're really quite different. For many people, Omega-6 intake is constantly high without any meaningful increase in omega-3 to counterbalance it. Now, that imbalance doesn't cause an immediate problem. You don't eat a bag of crisps and suddenly inflame your body. Instead, it creates a slow shift in the chemical environment of your tissues. Over months and years, your body becomes biased towards producing inflammatory eicosanoids. It's subtle, but it is significant. So here's the verdict without the internet drama. Seed oils are not inherently inflammatory, but when they're consumed in reasonably high amounts and their omega-6 content overwhelms omega-3 intake, they absolutely can contribute to a more inflammatory internal state over time. It's not toxicity, it's biochemistry. So how do we fix all of this? Well, you don't need to fear seed oils. You don't need to ban them. You just need to bring fatty acid balance back under control. And the first step in doing that is reducing omega-6 intake. For day-to-day -day cooking, opt for extra virgin olive oil. That's dominated by oleic acid, which is an omega-9 fatty acid that doesn't interfere with its balance and has well-established cardiovascular benefits as well. Then look at your broader food choices. I'm not going to tell you to avoid all processed food to save your soul, but just be sensible and gravitate towards whole foods most of the time. So that's omega-6 reduction taken care of. The next part, is increase in omega-3, and this is where nuance does matter. Omega-3 is not just one single thing. It's a family of fatty acids, ALA, EPA, DHA, DPA. But in humans, EPA and DHA do the heavy lifting when it comes to inflammation. These feed directly into the eicosanoid pathways further downstream and regulate inflammatory signaling far more effectively. We get from oily fish and grass-fed meat, so definitely increase your intake of those. I would also strongly recommend a supplement here, providing around about 750 milligrams of EPA and about 250 milligrams of DHA. But a quick safety note on that one, if you're on anticoagulant medication, do speak to a practitioner before you start taking that kind of dose off those fatty acids. Now, an important point, the omega-3 that's found in nuts and seeds is in the form of ALA, which has to be converted into EPA and DHA using those same enzymes. Humans are not good at doing that conversion. I mean, we can convert some, but not enough to move the, the needle particularly. So my vegetarian and plant-based friends, you do need a supplement. In recent years, you can get EPA and DHA from algae. That gap has now been closed. You can take that supplement. Brands like Viridian and Biocare produce algae-based supplements that provide both EPA and DHA. So you can actually fill that gap that way. So that, in a nutshell, is the seed oil conundrum and what to do about it. If you want to go deeper, I've added some links to some peer-reviewed research below so you can jump in and explore the science for yourself.